Hi guys and welcome back for another practical Rhino CAD tutorial and this time we're really going back to basics and looking at a simple tapered four claw or prong setting. Now I've had quite a few requests recently if I'll do some simpler videos for beginners so hopefully this is the sort of thing you'll be after. Now although as I said this is a fairly simple or beginners project I've still tried to go into the sort of detail that I do in my one-on-one -on -one CAD lessons with my students. So not just telling you how but also explaining why and breaking down my decision making process along the way. So let's get started. So to begin we're going to first import a standard diamond cut gemstone. So let's go to file at the top and then import going to find my one millimeter round diamond cut gem. I'll put a link to this uh, gemstone file in the description of the video. Now in the top view, let's zoom in on the stone by rolling my mouse foot forwards. And I'm going to change my viewpoint by right clicking on top and changing it to shaded. Okay, so at the moment, this gemstone is one millimeter. So just to demonstrate that, can see it's one millimeter. Now we want this to be five millimeters. So to do that, we're going to do a three dimensional scale. So let's go to transform and scale and 3D. So select objects to scale. So I choose my gemstone and press enter. Base point, we're going to go with the center of the world, which is the coordinate zero comma zero but I've set that up as a keyboard shortcut by pressing F4. So I'll just press F4 on my keyboard. Uh, scale factor, we want a scale factor of five. So it's currently one millimeter. We want it to be five, but it needs to be times five. So just type five and enter. And now if we go back into perspective and change our viewpoint to shaded, we can see we've now got a five millimeter gemstone. So now that we've got the stone to the right scale, I want to move it up to where it's going to sit relative to the bottom of the setting. So let's open the front view and change this view to shaded too. Zoom in on the stone. Now the stone's center, it's currently sat on the middle of the Y and X axis. So the Y axis is the green line, the X axis is the red line. Now I want the coolit or the, the tip at the bottom of my stone to be one millimeter above the center of the world or the, the, the intersection of the X and Y axis. So to do that, I'm going to click on the scone, go to transform move, point to move from, I'm going to snap to the bottom of the stone here, go to the end snap, click, then point to move to, I'm going to press F4 again on the keyboard, which is that zero comma zero uh, coordinate. Now to move it up one millimeter, many ways to do that but let's do it with the gumball so i'm going to turn the gumball on click the stone and then let's zoom in a bit and you see the green arrow here if i click on that once i can enter in the distance i want it to move so if i type one it should go one millimeter up in y which is the uh, the sort of north south axis there we go so you can see that it's moved up one grid square okay so now we can start to plan the under bezel of the setting. So the next stage is to start uh, creating the under bezel, which would sit underneath the stone that we will attach uh, the claws or prongs to the outside of. So to begin that process, let's go into the top view and ensuring that we've got project turned on down here, let's Draw a circle on the default layer that we're already on. So circle from center, center of circle, we'll go F4 because that's the center of the stone and the world. And then we'll just snap to the uh, girdle of the stone. So if we go into perspective, you can see that we've got a circle here, which is exactly the same in diameter as the stone. Now we're going to grab that with the gumball on and drag it up until it just sits level with the girdle of the stone, so about there. So just as the girdle of the stone begins at the widest point. Then let's just turn the gumball off for a second. And now we're going to extrude this, um, but with a taper. So go to solid, extrude plane of curve, and tapered. And the angle we want to set this to, 
is 17 degrees. So we go to the top command bar and click draft angle and type in 17. Okay. Reason 17, because if I was making this uh, under best by hand with a, um, a collet block, I'd use the 17 degree um, punch and block. So that's a good, um, a good angle for a diamond cut stone. And then we want to bring this down so it's level with the bottom of the screen. So I'm just going to press F4 again, which will snap it down to the bottom. So in perspective now, you can see we have a tapered collet, which at the minute, if I turn the gem layer off, you can see it's completely solid. So to make this hollow, we're going to shell this poly surface so that it's open at the top and the bottom. So let's go to the command bar and type in shell. And we need to give a thickness if we type thickness here. And I generally will go 0.9 for a collet of this size. So the wall thickness of 0.9. And it says select faces to remove from the closed poly surface. So we want the top and the bottom. So they will be open. And then I press enter when done. And there it instantly shows the collet so that it's hollow. Now if we return to the front view and turn the stone on. We can see that we've got the tapered collet. And you can see the wall inside, but let's go into Ghosted perhaps, so we've got a better view. Okay, now the top edge of the collet doesn't need to be level with the top of the girl of the stone. But we extrude from the top so that the line of sight or the angle um, of our collet will line up with the edge of the stone. So that's why we sort of start it here. And what we're going to do is chop off a little bit from the top. Now something that I'm regularly asked is, how do I know how far down to chop off the top of the collet so uh, that the stone will sit in nicely. Now it can be different for different stones and different sizes and especially if the shape of your stone's um, pavilion which is the bit at the back of the stone is rounder especially with coloured stones but with a diamond cut stone where we've got a straight line from the girdle to the um, coolet I generally we'll start by drawing a line at the side here to help me determine the distance. So let's go into the red layer and layer one and draw a line that snaps from the top of the collet here to the bottom here. So it's in line with our collet. Now, if we select this line and type in offset, I'm going to change the distance here to 0.2. Okay, so offset distance 0.2. And then you can see here, again, we're, we're in ghosted, so we can see through the collet. We've got this new red line, which is offset 0.2 from the outside. Now, where the pavilion or the back of the stone intersects with that line, so if I zoom, zoom in and put a point there, that's here. Oh, let's turn the intersect snap on. So, in snap there. That is a fairly foolproof way of deciding where to chop the top of the collet off. Okay. So, now that we've got that point, if I draw a line and let's turn the point snap on, snaps to that point, and draw my line straight across, you'll note that I've got author one, so my line is automatically straying, sorry, staying horizontal. Drag that across so that it clearly passes through the collet. So let's turn the stone on so that it's clearer for you. And what we're going to do now is chop off the top of the collet with the wire cut command. So let's go to the top, type in a wire cut. Say select cutting curve, where it's a line we've just drawn. Then it says select object to cut. It's this. Press enter when done. Press enter. Now, something that I prefer to do here, we've got keep all equals yes. So sometimes that by default might be on no. I prefer to keep it on yes and press enter when I'm finished. Just cut all the way through. And you'll see that what's happened now, it's separated this part above the color from the bottom. So I'm just going to delete the top bit that we don't need. So now if I turn the stone back on, you can see that the top of our collet is now a bit below the stone. And before we move on to the next stage, let's have a bit of a tidy up of the model space. I want to remove all the curves in the model. So the black curve here and all these red curves here. So a quick way to do that is to go into the command bar and type in S-E-L-C-R-V. So that's select curve. So select all my curves for me, and then I can just press delete. And obviously 
we've got the point left too. Right, it's a single click here, nice and easy for me. So click the point and press delete. Now let's go into the perspective view. And you can see that the stone is intersecting quite a bit with the collet. So I'd like to cut in a bit of a chamfer on the inside edge so that I've got an angle to start for when I do my setting and for the stone to sort of bear in and slot into. So to do that, we're going to use the chamfer command. Now, another regular question that I'm asked by, especially those that don't set themselves, is how uh, wide should this chamfered surface be? Well, obviously, it's not quite uh, a one, uh, one, an one, one answer fits all scenario, as not all gems are into the same shape. However, as a, an average general rule that allows a bit of tolerance, I'll go with three quarters of the thickness of the collet. Now, this collet here is 0.9 millimeters thick. So we want to do approximately three quarters of that. So that's about 0.7 of a millimeter. So if we go to solid, fillet edge, chamfer edge, and we change this next chamfer distance here in the command bar to 0 0.7 and press enter. Then we select the edges that you want to chamfer. So we've got this one here and this one here. And we press enter and then enter one more time to create the chamfered edge. So if we go back into the right view, we can see when I turn the stone back on, we're almost there in terms of cutting the bearing for the seat. And this just allows a little bit of tolerance so that if I want to move the stone up slightly higher, I can. Or if I want to burst slightly deeper into the collet, I've got a bit of extra thickness or tolerance here to do so. So again, we're not exactly as we want it. We're somewhere slightly above. Now, the last thing to do is to add the claws to the outside of the collet, which are the same angle as the collet. And to do that, we're going to utilize this surface edge, this black line that you can see here, because it already matches the correct angle of the collet. So just to make things easier, I'm going to turn the gem layer off and make myself active on the red layer. And what we're going to do is extend this edge into a curve above and slightly below the collet. So for a stone of this size, this is five millimeters, I want about three millimeters above um, the level of the top of the collet um, to allow me some extra tolerance and a bit extra length on the claws for setting. Now, obviously they can be trimmed back and they will be trimmed back, but having that extra three millimeters makes my life a hell of a lot easier. So to do that, we're going to use the extend command. So I'm going to type in the command bar, E-X-T-N-D, extend. And with the type as line, I'm going to type in a distance of three and enter. And I'm going to click the edge of this uh, surface here. So let's zoom in a little bit. Somewhere near the top, so just there. And this has turned um, that edge into a curve and extended it three millimeters beyond its current position. Now we don't need to go that far below because we're going to be eventually trimming it off on the bottom. So let's change the extension length again up here to one and then click the bottom of the, of the edge this time. And there we've got a line which has been taken from that edge and extended above and below the collet. So now we're going to turn this line into a round claw using the pipe command. So we're going to go to the command bar and type in pipe, P-I-P-E, and enter. Then it says select rail. Now it's this curve here that we've just made. And note that I'm active on the red layer, so the claw rate will be on that layer. And um, I've got my settings set to diameter. And I want a diameter of one millimeter for a stone of this size. Again, the stone's five millimeters. And we're having four claws, so I would use a one millimeter claw um, for a stone of this type. So I'm going to press 1 and enter and then enter again so it's the same diameter at the bottom and then press enter to say that there are no more diameters to add. And there it instantly creates a pipe around that central curve that we took from the edge of the collet. Now you can see that the bottom is obviously deeper than it needs to be and the reason we made this one millimeter longer is so that when we trim it back it will be flush with the bottom of the bezel. So let's do that now by going into the right view and we're going to use the same wire cut technique that we use on the top of the collet, although under bezel. 
So let's just draw a line from one end of the collet here, horizontally across. Again, note I've got author one, so my line's nice and horizontal. Click and enter. Then we're going to click the curve and type in wire cuts. Objects to cut is obviously the claw. Press enter. Enter again to cut through. And then we can just delete the bottom half and remove the lines that are left over while we're here. And before we move on, one very important thing we have to do now is move the claw slightly away from the stone. And the reason for this is that as we have pipes around the center line to create the claw, you can see that if we zoom in here, the girdle of the stone is intersecting about half of the claw's diameter. Now, ideally, we want the girdle of the stone to intersect into the claw no more than one third to a quarter of the claw's diameter. So, as we have a one mil claw, and uh, we know we're currently intersecting halfway, so 0.5, if I move this claw to the right by 0.2 millimeter, that should give me somewhere approximately between a quarter and a third intersection. So to do that, I'm just going to click the claw, hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and press my right arrow on the keyboard once, and that will give me a nudge distance of 0.2, as you can see in the command bar here. So now if we look at the claw, uh, intersected with the girdle of the stone, we can see that we've got about three quarters-ish of the claw left free with that intersection. And this ensures that when the claw is notched um, to create a, a sort of safe bearing for the stone, it's not going to affect the integrity uh, of the strength of the claw here. So essentially there's enough metal left over to be um, to work for the setting process. And now the last thing to do is to add in the other three claws to make up our four claw setting. So we're going to do that with the array command. So let's go into the top view and I'm going to select my claw and go to transform array polar. So the center of the array is the center of our world where we've been drawing everything around. So that's F4 on my keyboard, number of items, I'm going to type four and enter, angle to fill. Um, it's already on 360, so 360 degrees, so a full circle. So I'm just going to press enter. And then it gives me a preview. I'll say yes, I'm happy with that. Press enter again. And then if we go back into perspective, you can see that we've got our collet or under bezel with four nice, neat claws. Well, guys, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section, and I'll try my best to answer them. The building of this four claw setting typically forms the beginning of one of my bespoke online CAD lessons. I would then usually guide the student through developing this setting into a galleried solitaire ring as the example shown here. If you'd like to inquire about a one-on-one -on -one bespoke online interactive CAD lesson, don't hesitate to get in touch. To see more content like this, check out my page on Facebook and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Many thanks for watching. See you next time.